In 2009, uh, it was a great pleasure to be able to present four important sets of guidelines. The first one concerns infective endocarditis, diagnosis and management. This task force was led by Gilbert Habib from Marseille. It's a very important document. The first message is we are, we are going to reduce and we propose to reduce antibiotic prophylaxis only in patients with the highest risk of endocarditis, that is patients with previous endocarditis, patients with prosthetic valve and finally some forms of congenital heart disease. The second message is about diagnosis. The main technique for the diagnosis is echocardiography. We underline the fact that both transthoracic and transesophageal echocardiography are needed. In the clinical practice, uh, what is important is to perform echocardiography very early in the course of the disease. The last point is uh, the, probably the most important, that is the indication for surgery. The three main indications for surgery are heart failure, abscess or perivalvular complications, and finally, embolic complications. And the trend of this recommendation is to recommend early surgery, but sometimes urgent surgery, that is during the first week after initiation of antibiotic therapy, in the majority of the patients who have an indication for surgery. Second set of guidelines of great importance for all of us is the one done by Don Poldermans from Rotterdam on perioperative management and preoperative diagnosis uh, in, in case of non-cardiac surgery in cardiac patients. Here again, the diagnosis or the steps we have to follow to um, perform clinical investigation, non-invasive investigation, and in very rare cases, invasive investigation before non-cardiac surgery are nicely described. It is very practical. It's a first document of this sort. Uh, done by ZSC. Important points for the guidelines is a very structured approach. First of all, if you detect coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, start secondary prevention for atherosclerosis prior to surgery. Also, we continue aspirin. In the past, most patients prior to surgery discontinued aspirin. We continue aspirin. The other thing is the initiation of beta blockers, the titration schemes, the initiation of statins, how you should treat it and the policy about coronary revascularization. So a huge message, a huge of data to improve post-operative outcome. I would recommend to read the guidelines, to go for the pocket guidelines, because they're really helpful. Then we had guidelines on the management, diagnosis and treatment of patients with syncope. It was uh, run by Angel Moya and Richard Sutton. It's a very important document because syncope is a frequent but complex disease involving multidisciplinary approach with neurologists, a geriatrician, internal medicine uh, specialist and cardiologist for better and more effective management of these patients. The most important thing in evaluating patients with syncope is a very careful and detailed clinical history to perform an ECG uh, and a physical examination and in patients older than uh, 40 years probably got a sinus message and with this approach we can achieve the diagnosis in 50% uh, of the patients. The second message is that if the patient has a low risk, if they don't have many frequent episodes, we have not to initiate treatment, but we have to reassure the patient that it is a benign condition. There is another message. Um, it is very important in most of the hospital to set up a structured syncope unit in order to have a standardized uh, care for on those patients. This improves the rate of diagnosis and this improves the treatment. Finally, Nazareno Gallier from Italy presented an update on the diagnosis and management of patients with pulmonary hypertension. The take-home message for cardiologists is to have a suspicion of this condition, to perform an echocardiography. This will detect the presence of pulmonary hypertension according to specific limit and threshold we are giving in the 
uh, guidelines and then to apply very few simple examinations to identify the type. In the past two years, a large amount of new information has been provided by important hypertension clinical trials. So the joint ESH-ESC guidelines on hypertension have been updated. In Barcelona, Giuseppe Mancia highlighted for us the main changes. There is evidence that uh, renal subclinical damage, cardiac subclinical damage, vascular subclinical damage, they're all prognostically important. Uh, then there is evidence, uh, growing evidence, that uh, reducing blood pressure per se, no matter how the reduction is obtained, uh, is beneficial. So the greater the number of drugs we have, the greater the chance of having blood pressure control. And then uh, there are uh, new important data. For example, uh, a very important new study proving for the first time that even in very elderly subjects, those above 80 years of age, reducing blood pressure, if blood pressure is elevated, uh, is beneficial.